This video is a demonstration of our Nike Inc. earnings model. As we go through the details, please keep in mind that the video was created prior to the fiscal first quarter 2016 earnings call and that the values shown will update as new information is released. So please check our website periodically for the updates. When you first open the model, you'll see that we've collapsed some of the sections to make it a little bit easier to see. Um, and we just maintained the most important sections, like the income statement and the valuation summary, um, to just highlight those. But you can expand any of these by just checking the boxes on the left or the top section. So for now, we're going to freeze the frames here and we can go through. So it starts with the color legend up in the upper left hand corner and you'll see anywhere that um, we've highlighted a cell blue that represents our estimates and those are the values that you want to change when you download the model and start plugging in some assumptions for yourself. Purple cells represent the company's guidance and orange cells represent uh, consensus estimates. Below that we have a summary of our multiple base valuation and our discounted cash flow base valuation and our model's implied 12-month price target is based on a 50-50 weighting of those two valuations. Below that section you have the income statement and you'll notice that there are some dark gray shaded cells and some light gray. The light gray indicates that um, these are future periods and it also shows fiscal 116E which represents estimates and in the dark gray are the historic details which come from the company's uh, past press release and um, SEC filings. Below the income statement you'll see the segment details and um, Nike has a number of different segments so that's another important reason to keep them collapsed otherwise there's just too much information here. So we'll expand just the North America division for now and you can see that we break that out into North American footwear revenue, then the revenue growth rate quarter over quarter, North American apparel revenue, the apparel growth rate, and then equipment revenue and equipment growth rate. The company also discloses EBITDA margins by segment, so we include that here, and we have the EBITDA margin percentage. So again, this, is the, this represents the historic details by division, and you can see that um, our estimate cells in blue show how we project out future earnings. So you see that we have a growth rate for American footwear of 1% in fiscal first quarter 2016, which is where our footwear revenue number comes from. And then in a similar sort of idea, we have the same um, projection or a similar uh, projection for EBITDA margin which is where our North American EBITDA comes from. So this is just taking the total revenue for each one of those three subcategories and multiplying it by our margin. So once you do this for each one of the segments down here, the totals of those values, I'm just going to expand them all so we can see, end up in the revenue lines um, up above. So you can see this equation is simply adding all of the total revenue for each one of the segments down below. So that's really what's driving our top line earnings for the model. Next is cost of goods sold, which is derived based on what our gross margin projections are. So if you scroll down to the bottom of the segment details, you'll see some general ratio analysis and gross margin is the first, um, first number in that for first row in that ratio section. And as we go through, you can also see that we've put a number of comments in here. So anywhere that management guided a certain number, so for instance, they guided the gross margin to expand by 50 basis points, um, and that was part of the earnings call in June for the fourth quarter of last year. Um, so we've essentially included that guidance in this model. So now, once we have the gross margin in there, that will drive the cost of goods sold number. Now, for demand and operating overhead expense, they don't guide those specific items, but they do guide um, the total OPEX. So we've kept the, if 
you look at this equation, we've kept the percentage relatively stable. So demand creation expense is made up approximately 32% of total SG&A expense, and operating overhead expense is made up the remainder. So we've kept that percentage constant, and we've used the EBITDA margin from, or I'm sorry, the EBIT margin from each one of the segments to come up with what the total SG&A expense would be. And then, just to make sure that we were in line with what management had guided to, you can see this purple cell represents guidance. On last earnings call, management guided SG&A costs to grow at mid-single-digit growth rates. Um, and this $10.4 billion represents a growth rate of just over 5%. So we're in line with guidance there. Uh, so interest expense, we keep it consistent as a percentage of the long-term debt balance. And other expense was actually guided by management to be a bit higher than what we've seen in the past, other than the fourth fiscal quarter of last year. And so we took that guidance and just input the um, 50 million that management expected in other income. For provisions from income tax, that comes from our effective tax rate, again in the ratio, ratio section below the segments and they guided full year tax rate at 24%, so obviously that's gonna fluctuate from quarter to quarter, but we just kept it flat at 24%. From there, we have the, um, the shares outstanding on a basic and diluted basis. And we really are just forecasting what the diluted EPS number would be, so we really only need the diluted share count. And there is some uh, general dilution that occurs with shares, and then of course, the company is under a repurchase program right now. So if you want to see where our diluted share count comes from, you can see that we take um, the general share growth, and then we subtract from that the shares that are repurchased. So right now, the company has another $2 billion in the current program for share repurchases. And if you s assume that those repurchases will um, execute at about $115 um, dollars per share, and that it will be spread out over the next four quarters, then that means about 4.3 million shares will be retired for next quarter. So other than the income and the segment details, we also model out the balance sheet and the cash flow statement. So the, the balance sheet and cash flow statement is really only needed if you're doing a discounted cash flow valuation approach. If you're only going to do the multiple based approach, then you really only need the earnings for the next 12 months, and you can ignore these and keep them collapsed. But if you do want to model out the full balance sheet and the cash flow, the details are here. Some of the balances are very difficult to project, so we actually like deferred income taxes and prepaid expenses. So we just set those equal to what they were at the end of last period. Um, we tend to focus on accounts receivable, inventory, and accounts payable. And if you scroll to the bottom of the balance sheet, you'll see we use some um, income statement ratios, I'm sorry, some balance sheet statement ratios to project out the balances up here. Take a similar approach with the cash flow statement. So there are only a couple assumptions that you could make in the cash flow statement that would feed through the balance sheet, and that would be if uh, there's any changes in the debt, so pay downs or new issuance, you could put those in here and they'd flow through the balance sheet. And you can see here that the purchase of common stock is coming through the cash flow statement and also the dividends that the company is paying out. Now at the bottom of the cash flow statement you'll notice that we do a discounted cash flow valuation for each one of the next five years and that's our first stage in our DCF and then at the, the, the terminal stage takes place down at the bottom of the valuation section. If you want more details on how our discounted cash flow valuation approach works, please visit our website and we have a 10 minute video that explains it in detail. After the cash flow statement, you'll see the summary of our multiple valuation approach and our discounted cash flow approach. So we're, we're for Nike, we're just looking at the three month average next 12 month price earnings ratio, the low I'm sorry, the low and the high, and we're using 
about the average for our valuation, but you can change this number here if you think that the multiple, a different multiple would be more appropriate. And we're also adding to that the net cash per share. And then if you expand uh, the DCF section, you'll see that we have um, a number of assumptions. Again, there's a 10 minute video that goes through each one of these. And uh, the details for our terminal growth stage. So now that we have an understanding of how the model works, we can use this model to make some different projections. So for instance, let's say this quarter you think that the uh, that China is going to slow down much more than than what we originally anticipated after last quarter. You could go here and say, okay, for fiscal first quarter 2015, let's say footwear declines by 35%, apparel also declines by 35%, and equipment doesn't really matter, but let's say that that goes down by 35% as well. And you can see what happened to the valuation just from making those changes. So I'll undo those for now. You could also, um, maybe you're a little worried about where volatility has been relative to where it was last quarter. So you could go down to the DCF section and say, okay, well, what was our assumption for volatility? We had implied volatility of 16%. Let's say that goes up to 20%. And as we do that, watch what happens to the DCF valuation. So it came down by $22 by having that huge change in, in volatility. You could also change interest rates. Um, you could change a number of things. You could change what the repurchase price is on the shares. So maybe you think that they won't be able to buy, or maybe you think all two billion will come in next quarter. You could do that and see what the impact on the valuation would be. There's a number of assumptions that you could change here. If you'd like to download this model and try some different assumptions for yourself, please go to Gutenberg Research and visit our model store. Also, be sure to check back after Nike Reports results when we update this model. Thanks for watching.